to Oswe Street. Come down here today to have a look at something that uh, Derry's found. Uh, you recognise Derry from one of the previous videos. And he's very kindly offered to uh, show myself and somebody else around um, one of the exhibits. It's either here or it's up at, uh, in storage in the quarry, but he's got access to show us it. Uh, and it's something to do with another project that uh, I'm working on with somebody else. So it's going to be really good to uh, have a good look around. I've got my camera with me so I can record something for posterity so you can have a look at it uh, and see. I've never been here before. Oswest Tree is somewhere I've driven past but never actually visited. So it's nice to see the Cambrian Railway's headquarters here behind me and still exists, been restored and this was actually used to be a huge railway station uh, up until probably 1960s most of the area has been redeveloped if I turn this way the big building you see over there is uh, what used to be the Cambrian Railways uh, locomotive works the building still exists, no longer in railway use in fact from what's once upon a time been a very busy station, there was somewhere in the region of six, seven platforms here. There's now only one, which is still in use with a, a second one over there, which they presumably will at some point uh, restore. There were three tracks through here, a centre road, as far as I'm aware, and uh, platform roads either side. And there's just this platform road remaining. There is actually some evidence there of one of the bay platform edges. And uh, see the signal protecting the rest of the line there. It's not actually open going that way. I'm going to go and see if I can find Derry.
carry some painting. This can be cream and brown. Oh, That's right. the one we're going to use in April or May. Right. Hopefully. Was it just a Mark One or is it? Yeah, Mark else? One from London. Yeah, but we, well, it came. It was in London and then it went to Keithley and we got it from Keithley. Right. And right. that's the same time, but so you can call it because I think they're painting it. Yeah. That's the main steam train we got. Right. Oh, that's nice. Oh, thank yeah, you very much. It's good when you say it's all good. It's looking nice. Yeah, nice, nice warm day. Yeah. So, until they fix the, uh, the bridge down there, we can't do much about it. Well, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. I'll oh, see. I'm guessing that these were originally milk dock, cattle dock. Actually, still here. And this is the south end of the station. Some quite complicated track work. You can see over there. That was a break to suggest that I might be restoring that. That's an impressive signal. No trains running today, though. It looks like uh, so. Is it South Eastern and Chatham Railway built, or is it? Uh, it's built to their design. Um, again, I've heard I've heard it's either was built by South Eastern Chatham or directly by the MOD. Because mm. um, it's very very similar to it. the Southern Railway ones that they were chucking out from Lansing Works. Yeah, were all to that design as well because it's got that tumble home on the roof. Yeah, which is quite distinctive. But I know um, even in the, the the Second World War, they were making those for all of the railway companies. So even though it was um, ostensibly a Southern Railway wagon, they ended up all over the place. Yeah, yeah so they're in Great Western. I've seen them in LMS livery. Yeah. Not and, seen any L and E R ones though. I would a assume a lot of private owner ones as well. Mm. Uh, this one is because it was it was destroyed and rebuilt. You can see. The, uh, it's got extra bits where they refitted the roof. Right, yeah. Extra braces. Well, we're up here at the quarry, and that more. Um, scoffing down a ton its wafer bar, because we lived off these in Scotland. And there's some interesting stuff here. There's an Andrew Barclay there, and I'm assuming these are probably lime kilns, or were. That's quite impressive there. Well, we went a bit closer, and this is actually inside the bottom of one of those lime kilns, and you can see the flues there, and even the remnants of the very last limestone that was uh, reduced to uh, lime. And this is the old rail line, last used in, I think, about 1989, but it's still here. It survived by virtue of, well, just sort of disappearing into the undergrowth, I suppose. But we're just looking around here. We're going to be going up and hopefully at some point seeing some of the stock that's kept up there. But um, we'll wait and see. We're just, uh, we've, we've, we've lost a will um, and unfortunately we've also lost mobile phone signal so we can't get hold of him. So I'm hoping that he finds some way of getting in touch. <laughs> some kind of monorail. Ingenuity being the mother of all invention. Right. They used it for um, um, water press fields. Right. It was used in sand quarries. Um, Ascot, Ascot Raceway used it to renew the drainage because. Because it stands on these pods, on metal plates, yeah. the metal plates there, all it did was put little squares, so 24 hours after they'd taken it up again they could race, whereas if they'd put a roadway across the JCBs it would have been 12 months. Right, so all the names on there, that's where these came from, where they did works. I wonder where in Bolton that came from. Buckfield, Binford. Brentwood, Maxborough, Wantage. The true working steam monorail engine in the world. Oh, right. And that runs on the same track? It does. It's, unfortunately, you can see, it's stood in this container in Brighton for six years. 
Right. So we've got a lot of work to do on it. For example, the yeah. smoke up storage seas and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Nothing too onerous, yeah. but we've got to get it worked. It's, uh, it was built in 1980. The guy built it specifically. There is a monorail engine in Delhi Museum in India, mm -hmm. a steam monorail engine, mm -hmm. but it has a big balance wheel on the right hand side which runs on a concrete track. Yeah, I've so seen it's not pictures of that. Monorail. Mm. This is a true monorail. Right. But it has to have, the only thing is, we can't run it on this track. We can run it on the track, but we can't run it on these legs because the centre of gravity is so high it would tip off. So we have to have double legs. You'll see they've got two, two pods to stand on. Right, right. So I'm just looking at how the point work works. Is that you just stamp on that, it pushes it up, and you pull it. Yeah. It's easy as that. Yes, we've got, and then you've got uh, because it's we've got to jiggle it down, then you push that one down with a bar. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how easy the points are to move. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Very simple, isn't it? When it's it is, yes. Wow. Told these are one oh sevens. How far does the line go that way, or is it another fifty or sixty yards, and that's as far as it ever went? Right. That was where the stop block was. So these are affected the quarry loading sidings. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The stone crusher. You see the green, the bank over there. Yeah. Where, where the new trees have been planted. That's where the stone crusher was. Right. And there was a siding that ran from there up under the stone crusher, and you can see the levels. It ran up there, up onto the top of the lime kilns. One went on the top, one came down and then went up. Right, so right. that's where they took the stone up to the top of the, and the coal to the top of the lime kilns. So how far down does it, it run going that way? We, go, we, we own a mile. Right. We own a mile, so. Uh, we can't run it all yet, we've got to get across that little road crossing. But right. We're getting there slowly, we're only a small group, you see. Ah, oh, so you've got plenty of spare seats in the other one. Ah, oh, well, look, what he's got is that these two are a, a twin power car operating test. Right, yeah. We've got a middle coach, right. the only one in preservation that goes in the middle. Then he's got another twin power car set that he's doing that. Right, I'm with you. And that's his accommodation coach. Oh, does he actually live in it? Yeah. Well, it's the weekends. It's the weekends and weekends. Right, right, I'm with you. Which is why I mark one patient's painting up as a game either. Right, I, that, that, that threw me. It wouldn't break, but unfortunately it didn't work, because of course if you've got a stack of bricks, by the time you get to the top, 
the weight pushing down on the bottom one, you've only got to go over one jolt like that because it... And they all crack. Yeah, and it didn't... Uh, and there's a little wick on under the blue pellet. Right, right. Hello, Plasmore. Um, they've persevered and they still... Uh, they still send blocks out by uh, by rail, but they're they're long wheelbase air brake, the OBAs with the high ends. Yeah, I mean uh, I'm not technical, so. Mm. So what is this this point here? Is that what's left? You said there was a line that went up to the top of the kiln. Yes, there's the points here coming off. Right. Now we're not sure whether the lines are still there because the quarry, of course, just buried everything. But if you notice, the siding goes out and through the hedge, but the rails are still there. But of course that field belongs to somebody else. You can see we've got a set of points there. But the first lever is very funny. It's a socket pump, which we think was for pumping water. Because the concrete base, you can see where the lever point was. Hmm. It was a great western square water tower. Anyway, we're going to run out of battery power soon. So I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. Me, Jake Kurt, saying thanks for watching. And I'll catch you again next time. Take good care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony and Michael Churchwood. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.